artist Mark Flynn. That went really he, high. He didn't say the artist Mark Yeah, I know, because there's not enough space for it. We've looked at Sonic, we've looked at his enemies, we've looked at Vegeta, we've looked at, well, Knuckles. It's about time we looked at his sidekick, the original one, before all the enemies and rivals were his sidekicks, the OG. If you're like me and lost in the swarm that was Sonic the Hedgehog's 90s popularity, you definitely would have also recognised the sidekick of the Blue Blur, Miles Prower himself, Tails the Fox. That really doesn't have the same ring as Sonic the Hedgehog, does it? The character sped into the franchise with new flight-based abilities that separated him from the world's most famous hedgehog. Flight was the character's main selling point, and how was this possible, you ask? Two Tails, of course. Hence the name, and hence the logic behind... Yeah, that doesn't actually make sense, does it? Regardless, Tails has been one of the franchise's most popular characters since he arrived, and like Sonic, his design has resonated with decades' worth of gamers. Tails was designed from the ground up with an aim to attract new audiences as Sonic's sidekick, and this is illustrated through his smaller, cutesy appearance, in contrast to Sonic's, at the time, edginess and cool demeanour. He would appear in numerous games across the franchise, and even lead as the front man in some of his own games at the peak of his popularity. His design has changed, perhaps not as drastically as his Blue Hedgehog friend, but he's definitely evolved whilst keeping his trademark features intact. Today we'll look at the designs from across the years and games that stand out to me, though if there's a great one you think I've missed, do let me know in the comments section. I'm only looking at the ones that truly stood out to me today. I'm the artist Mark Flynn and today let's find out which Tails design I think truly is best. At this time if you could like the video, subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell, you'd be helping out this channel on the road to its new goal of 30,000 subscribers. Before we get started today, I'd like to thank Skillshare for sponsoring this episode. If you're not familiar with Skillshare, you obviously haven't been watching my videos as I've been singing their praises for the past few months. Specifically, how I've used their courses to hone my digital skills across the board. They are an online learning community with tons of courses available and I'm still powering through courses on the platform, though I've recently moved up to double speed playback because learning things fast is way past cool. This month I'm revisiting the courses of the charismatic Aaron Draplin, who has easily been my favourite teacher on the platform, and learning more about logo design in his course, Logo Design with Draplin, Secrets of Shape, Type and Colour. Again, it's a highly engaging video course which breaks down his way of structuring logo design in a clear to understand way, with easy to follow chapters that didn't leave me wanting to escape the classroom that is my bedroom. Skillshare is very affordable, with a yearly subscription costing you less than $10 a month. Today I've got one final two month free premium member for the first 1,000 people that use the link in the description below. So, if you've got some time spare and would like to learn something new, I've said it a thousand times now, but I'd really recommend giving Skillshare a try so you can explore your creativity. Thanks for listening. While Tails has been featured in the Sonic franchise for as long as I can remember, he didn't actually arrive until the release of the second Sonic the Hedgehog title, though a sneak glimpse of him could be found in the simultaneously developed Sonic CD. The character made his debut in 1992's Sonic 2 as a sidekick to Sonic, following along in gameplay. Playable in single player, helping out Sonic in the tornado sections, yes, a flying fox does also fly a plane for some reason, and going head to head with Sonic in the game's signature versus mode. God damn, do I hate the aspect ratio in this mode. The character's initial appearance is obviously quite similar to Sonic in the sense that he uses the same anthropomorphic style that the Hedgehog had established, but there are obvious differences at the basis of his design. His eyes are much smaller than Sonic's, with two clearly visible dual eyes against Sonic's saucer plate style mono eye, and his chest fur and muzzle are white as opposed to the tan colour Sonic had used previously. He uses orange fur, a literal opposite to Sonic's blue on the colour spectrum, and his gloves and shoes were also somewhat similar to Sonic's, with minor changes changes including black wristbands on his gloves and a simpler two-tone red and white trainer design with accompanying black straps. Despite Sonic's huge design differences between the Eastern and Western world, Tails' design remained relatively faithful between the box arts of different regions. The style he was captured in did alter slightly, but at its core, the character was presented in a very similar way on both sides of the globe, which isn't flat by the way. Just felt the need to point that out. Okay, the, the Earth is a sphere. Okay. In the game itself, the 16-bit pixels do a great job of displaying the character in a pint-sized cutesy fashion. All the key features were there, despite his head being the exact same size as his body. Moving into follow-up games in the series, while Sonic ended up having a pretty severe makeover between Sonic 2 and 3, he essentially made use of the exact same in-game sprites for the most part, with visible changes coming specifically for some of his in-game actions. 
Both his flying and swimming animations had noticeable new details, with each of them providing a little bit more of a look at the character's expressions. I almost find these jarring in a sense, as the rest of his sprite frames are nowhere near as expressive. Regardless, Tails made an immediate impact in these games, and that to me was always down to his super cute and expressive in-game look. There was something about his sprite that was always so charming to me, whether it was him flying through levels or yawning when bored. It was an incredibly appealing design that definitely set the bar high for future instalments. The character would make appearances in some of his own solo outings on the Game Gear following his debut in games of… questionable quality. But while he used ever so slightly modified sprites, at his basis the character was still presented in a very similar fashion. Strangely, despite being portrayed in this way throughout his original games, a different design trope would make its debut in TV adaptations of the franchise. Both The Adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog and Sonic Sat AM featured similar designs for Tails, which were brown for some unknown reason. I'm not exactly sure why Tails' difference in colour came to be in these shows, but from rooting around online, the recurring story seems to be related to timing. Both shows were developed before there was any real public knowledge about Sonic the Hedgehog 2, with shows planned immediately following the success of the first game, where only Sonic was present. Because of this, developers of the shows didn't know what Tails 100% would accurately look like. It's kind of similar to how Bart Simpson wore a blue t-shirt across all of the official Simpsons merchandise. It definitely explains the absolute monstrosities he had on his feet. Yeah, I know, they're just inverted Sonic trainers, but just look at them, they're horrific. Despite this inconsistency, the portrayal of Tails in this style looked great in my opinion, and was largely very faithful to the character outside of colour scheme. And whether it was intentional or not, the change helped a young artist Mark Flynn successfully distinguish between the different canons of game and TV show for the first time. And I actually really like the brown fur. I'm not the only one apparently, as a huge number of comic books from Archie would expand upon this design for many years that followed, while other comics such as Fleetway's Sonic the Comic also started the character in a similar way. Sonic Adventure would show off some big changes to Tails, much like the rest of the cast of characters with the change in attitude and approach to the series. Like Sonic, he grew taller and slimmer, gained irises in his eyes, blue to be precise, and his artwork became much more angular and bold, with vibrant shading and thick line work. His fur was changed to be a lighter shade of orange, almost yellow, and his new streamlined appearance featured rounder ears and longer tails. His gloves and trainers still featured bands around them both, though they were significantly less strap-like. At his core, from the group of adventure redesigns at least, he reminds me most of his classic appearance out of the cast of characters. It's definitely a fitting update to this look and a logical next step in the evolution of the character. This artwork translated well into the 3D model present in Adventure and looked even better in Adventure 2. Unfortunately, it was hidden behind a nasty-ass purple mech for the majority of the game, meaning I had more fun controlling Tails whilst in the Chow Garden. When looking at Tails' design from this point onwards, it generally feels like his look peaked in terms of changes from this point onwards, with future games reimagining how he appeared in Adventure in a variety of different styles. Sonic Advance did this in probably the freshest way, trying to downscale this artwork into a 32-bit, fluidly animated 2D sprite. He did a great job of presenting the character in his at the time, current day look on a handheld console and certainly felt like a thorough advancement of his Mega Drive appearance in line with the times. Sonic Battle, the fighting game on the same system, made use of modified advanced sprites and modified adventure style artwork that was far more angular with thicker coloured edges and bluer eyes. Sonic Riders would again adopt a similar style, However, like the rest of the cast, goggles were added along with a new set of high top trainers to complement the new sketch-like style shading style. Honestly, in all of Tails' other appearances, I genuinely struggled to tell the difference between them, if there are any. When the game shifted to full 3D renders, Tails kind of came to a halt with design development. There was 06, Generations, Olympic Games, Sonic 4, Rush, a huge amount of spin-offs in general. He always seemed to use the same design, with varying different levels of graphic quality dependent on the console he was present on, much like Mario and his cast of characters from the same era. Like the other Sonic characters, this 3D render was basically his adventure design presented in a different way across different genres and games. I guess if I really looked into it, he did look a tiny bit more like a child in Heroes, reverting back height-wise ever so slightly. But I refuse to talk about Tails in that game after what he did to my ears. Look at all those Eggman's robots!
I mean, even amongst the ambitious Sonic projects, Tails hasn't really changed it up. Sonic Boom is notorious for how it rebooted Sonic. There's a hint about a very cool video coming up in that sentence, by the way. But even here, Tails barely changed. They extended his gloves, threw a bit of tape over his shoes, and gave him some goggles and a utility belt. He stands out as the only member of the cast to really not look all that different. There are subtle changes, however, that really suit his characterization as an inventor. Surprisingly, one piece of media I've yet to mention across all of my videos is the appearance of Sonic and Tails in Cartoon Network's OKKO. OK While I'd never been aware of the existence of the series, because you know, I'm 30, an episode in season 3 caught my attention when it featured cameo appearances from none other than Sonic and Tails themselves, with tons of references to Sonic from the past and present, and Parks and Recreation. The worst. <laughs> I absolutely loved the showcase of the characters in this tune like style. Tails looked absolutely brilliant here, with his design harkening back to his classic one, with features such as his blue eyes thrown into the mix with a modern tune like charm added to the surface. Of course, I can't mention recent pieces of media without drawing attention to the Sonic the Hedgehog movie, which of course, spoils for the only film of 2020 coming up, featured Tails in its after credits sequence. While it took some getting used to Sonic's design and subsequent redesign across the film's development, the appearance from Tails was anything but hard to look at. The character popped out of the ring into live action style in seamless fashion, literally nothing about this looked wrong to me, and it's exactly how I would have expected the character to look in a fully 3D style, with realistic, as possible, textures and all of the staples of his classic design, from the tails to the shoes, right down to the Miles electric device he uses throughout the scene. The secret to this not looking shocking? It's all in the eyes. I mentioned earlier how Tails' eyes have always been at a smaller scale to Sonic, and while the titular character's eyes had to be altered to adapt to the film's visual style, this didn't have to play into Tails' design development at all. It's a tremendous interpretation of the character, and I can't wait to see more of it in the sequel. So there's a brief rundown of Tails' designs over the years, but which one do I think is best? It's certainly a tricky one. Ultimately, I feel like as a character, he's probably changed the least out of a cast that has changed quite a lot. But ultimately, partly because of this, I have to give it to the OG. <laughs> Why do I keep saying OG? I sound like such a loser. Tails' first appearance on the Mega Drive was pretty much perfect to me and set the standard for what a great video game sidekick should actually look like. They got things incredibly right here. From an artwork perspective, the changes have been pretty subtle, though I do prefer some of the details such as the straps around his trainers and gloves. From an in-game perspective, Sonic 2 hit it out of the park, and that was proven when Sonic 3 used basically the same set of sprites, whilst characters like Sonic and Knuckles changed quite a bit across the classic titles. Tails pretty much looked exactly the same, and this has carried over into much later games such as Sonic Mania as well. I personally loved the charm that this sprite had. He was cute when he needed to be, just look at the little yawn, oh he's so goddamn adorable. But then, at the same time, look how determined he actually looked when he was in action, sprinting through stages with a level of intensity that is portrayed surprisingly well. It all rolls into what is a great look for the character, and while he's re-emerged in future games like Generations and tons of merchandise, they don't seem to have the same subtle edge as this version did for me. So that's it this week, but what do you think? Do you agree with me, or would you have picked another design? Let me know in the comments section below, as well as any other episodes you'd like to see. A big thank you goes to my patrons who help make videos like this possible, with a special shout out going to Doug Slade and Proggy Froggy who are donating at the top tier. If you'd like to appear on this screen or just support the maintenance of this channel, Channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon. 